Welcome everybody, I am Paul Hakes, this is James Hakes. We're going to do a five part mini series on a truly groundbreaking and highly disruptive performance catamaran. Of course we're talking about the HH44 and uh, during the series we're going to go take an in-depth look at some of the design features that have made this boat what we call Yachting Evolved. So this boat has been designed from the ground up around the idea of electrification, has many new features not seen before in other boats, uh, folding transoms, we've got swing helm, we've got huge ventilation, pocket doors, gorgeous finishes, uh, really great sailing performance obviously, being part of the HH Catamarans family, it needs that race pedigree DNA. So yeah, welcome to Yachting Evolved. Our boats are built as uh, no compromise boats. Um, they're built from carbon fiber. It makes them light, it makes them comfortable and very safe. Uh, this no compromise kind of philosophy has been from the very start of our builds and, and goes right through and it starts with great design, of course and this is what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, our range started with the HH-66. Now we have the HH-50, the HH-55, we have a 77, and now even an 88 in build, you know, a true super yacht. Um, all these boats have in common um, strong, lightweight construction, race pedigree, and of these boats, the 50s and the 55s would be the, the most popular because they can be owner operated. And um, they're great boats for a family who wants to cruise around the world. But the, the 50 is still uh, It's a big powerful. boat, eh? It's a big boat, it's yep. still powerful. And for some people, they you know, might want something a little smaller. So that's when we started toying the idea with a new design, something smaller, yeah. So then the conversation turned to, well, how small should it be? Um, it still needs to maintain the performance characteristics of the HH Catamaran, but we really needed to decide uh, what is this boat? What goes yeah. into it? It has to still be a world cruiser. Still be a world cruiser. So we started with a couple or a small family, and what do they need? Um, what do we demand of an HH Catamaran in terms of luxuries, amenities, space? Um, the features and the equipment that people need to live on a boat. Um, this mm. defined our starting sort of footprint. Then we look at uh, how much weight does that take? What sort of hull shape are we going to need to support that, that payload? Because um, obviously a world cruiser needs a very good payload. And that defined really the waterline length we were looking at. And then the, the beam to length ratio sits roughly between the 50 and the 55, so right in the HH Catamaran family, you know, tried and true, proven. And uh, yeah, this is how we came up with the, the sort of starting point, the platform that we worked with. Always with an eye on performance. Always. Never letting that go. So we, we took our HH50. And, and shrunk it down. That's a, a natural design thing to do. But it didn't work. It was too top heavy. Uh, whereas the, the 50 has got the most spectacular helm, uh, helm positions and, and helm stations you could ever want on a, on a, on a cruising boat. Um, it just didn't work on this model. It was too top heavy. So we started playing around with the um, moving the helms into the, into the aft cockpit, yeah? And right. then and then this kind of morphed into the back to the swing helms. Now, interestingly, this is something we, we released in 2014 with our very first HH66, a swing helm. And it worked really well. <laughs> it's interesting since then many other competitors have claimed that it's their in innovation, you know, yeah. but we so just did it. <laughs> what we're actually putting in the aft cockpit of the HH44 is a, 
there's an off-the-shelf product from Jeffa that works, and many boats have it. Um, monohulls, some use it. A, yep. a central pedestal can swing from side to side. You know, there's many different functions. Why, why did we do it? Simple. Uh, swing it in, get out of the weather. Swing it out, look down the side deck, clear line at your sails. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. We really got to um, start again with the coach roof almost. Uh, removing the helms gave us a lot of freedom and flexibility to restyle it. We looked at really sharp, aggressive windows, um, flat that open, which is great. We um, styled in some gorgeous pedestals. Uh, also on the exterior, since we lowered the helms into the aft cockpit, we decided that we needed to make it really safe. So one of the most striking features of the exterior of the boat are the transoms. Um, something not seen before on other catamarans. And this was again... Huge part of the styling, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All integrated styling. Um, not, yeah, not seen before. One cool thing, just from an aesthetics point of view, is it helps carry the share line all the way to the back of the boat. And that is why for a 44-foot boat, it actually kind of looks a bit bigger, a bit longer, and a bit sleeker. Mm. And how we arrived at these was, well, firstly, we noticed on all our other boats, um, a very popular option is, is washboards across the transom to keep the aft cockpit safe for children, for pets, and to keep out a following sea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's where it started. Uh, many years ago when we were building, um, indeed, we were building the Gunboat 60s, it was a popular choice back then in an aft following sea out in the ocean, put the washboards in and, and it really actually evolved for us again where, we, as you say, we saw all our owners going out sailing with the washboards in simply because they had the pets on board or the children yeah. on board. And then coupled with the fact that we've now put our aft helms into the aft cockpit of the boat, um, making that a, a dry, safe space became crucial. And we didn't want a, a washboard that people had to take in and out. So we, we designed in something um, permanent that looks great and is incredibly functional and uh and i love it yeah. <laughs> it also extends the boat essentially right we've right, got right. now uh, how long i mean so uh, you would start with a 44 foot boat and in the ocean typically you've got your your stern your, your transom steps and while sailing that's not usable space so perhaps you only have a 40 foot boat that you can actually live on when you're at sea with Closing off the transoms, now all the way to the back of the boat is, is livable, usable space. So you could consider it like you have the space of a 48 footer, really, yep. and fold down the transoms, the, the overall length does become 48 feet. Right, that's an important feature. So a normal catamaran with your normal transom, transom steps would be 48 foot. So we've got a 48 foot size salon, cabins, she's a 48 foot with long boat and we space. fold up those steps yeah. and she's so 44. Just, yeah, created something nice and compact and sleek um, yep. that we think serves a really unique space in the market. So immediately moving the helms into the aft cockpit opened up the coach roof for a, a world leading solar installation. Um, and can, can I just ask? How world leading is this uh, solar installation? Uh, well, on the HH44, the boat comes standard with 3.2 kilowatts of solar power. So that's a lot. Um, Anything else compared to it? Anything? Not that I know of. Not yeah. at this size. <laughs> Maybe soon. Yeah. Uh, but also, so flattening the coach roof, removing all that gear, allows, opens it up for all the solar, but then also allows us to lower the boom, lowering the center of effort, increasing the mainsail area, which is all fantastic. So let's just touch on that a little bit, because I think that's a really, really important point. Um, you, you talk about lowering the center of effort and lowering the boom. What does that actually mean for the catamaran? What does that mean for driving the boat? Uh, in terms of uh, the way you would experience it sailing the boat, is you can put more power at you know, sheet on your sails, put more power into the boat, uh, accelerate more without heeling the boat. 
Um, the higher your center of effort, the, the less amount of sailor it takes to, to heal the boat over. So right. now we've lowered the boom, you're getting all this extra, more power, more, more comfort power down low where yeah. you want it driving the boat. I love the styling of the, the, the coach roof. That's something I'm quite proud of. <laughs> so you should be. An uh, artist needs to be truly proud of his work, and you are. I mean, this really had to be a groundbreaking boat. Um, and, and when I say groundbreaking, you know, James and I, we set about, uh, or James is the naval architect, and we set about, though, with the design philosophy that we're creating a boat for years to come. This isn't a boat uh, that, that you know, is, is gonna be next, next year's fad. This is gonna be an industry leader. And that's why we, I, I called it highly disruptive. It's highly disruptive in its style, its design, and its technology. And it will be uh, a leader uh, in the marketplace for many years to come. And, and when I say Groundbreaking technology, I, I think the biggest part of that is the, what we call the eco drives. It's a, it's a parallel hybrid system. And we're gonna really dive deep into that in, in one of our uh, next videos. But what it's given you, the yachtsman, is uh, electric, silent, fume-free propulsion at a good speed. But, you know, with all this technology, people worry. So. It's, it's, it's piggybacking on reliable, trusted diesel engines. And those diesel engines have got your normal cruising range at normal cruising speed. Um, and you can just flick on the hybrid system when you want. So, and then you have all the advantages of the, the silent electric motoring. Um, <clears throat> and, and that's why it was so important to maximize our solar, to complement the lithium battery banks, that uh, have, give you this wonderful addition, I would say. And along with the electric propulsion, uh, you get instant torque for maneuvering. And you also have hydro regeneration. Um, so you're, you're actually generating electricity while you're sailing. The, the, the plus sides, well, it, it's just a no-brainer in my mind, right? Yeah, <laughs> groundbreaking. But yeah, like you said, we'll dig into the details in another video because it's a, it's a pretty big topic that I'm sure people want to know about. Right. So you can tell we're very excited about this boat, the groundbreaking HH44. And in the next few weeks, we're gonna release a lot more details, design details, we're gonna dive right into it. So, oh, one thing. We're building the first boat already. We yeah. are, we are. We're, we're, we're building right now. We're infusing carbons. The first molds are just ready. Obviously, there's a lot more molds we've got to build as the, this boat takes form and develops. But look, it's underway. So if you've enjoyed this, please hit the subscribe button. Give us the thumbs up. And if you are interested, please reach out to us. Um, and, and we'd love to partner with you and uh, build your dream boat. To request more information about our groundbreaking HH44, click here. To watch the next video in the series, click here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more updates.